Hey, what's going on everybody? Today we are looking at the Quest style, uh, the M15, which is literally a very, very good dongle DAC. Music lossless DAC with headphone amplifier. There's a little teeny thing, dongle, uh, and it works fantastic. Spoiler alert, I like this a lot. I would go on record as saying I actually love this. Um, so far from what I've used, there's been a few that I really, really like, like the DD Hi-Fi, the um, T44C, whatever the heck it was. Um, that was excellent. Uh, then we had like the the really higher-end um, Hi-Fi Go Bar. Excellent, a lot of power there, a lot of features, filters and stuff. But then you get into something like this. Its feature is, it's got really nice looks. It sounds superb. Uh, and it's actually very good at powering headphones as well as IAMs. So uh, you can see right here the specs that we've held up. Um, right now they're, they're having this thing going on where they, um, you get a free case and your case would come in this little box here. And there's various colors, uh, as you can see. You can see inside there's the internals, there's a nice little window here, this is the, one of the cases, this one obviously is like a tannish brown, uh, there's the high and low gain switch, that's the only other control on the device. Um, right here you have your balanced and you have your 3.5mm um, single ended, and of course your USB-C on this side. It really looks nice, and there's lights in there. Some people said that told me that the, the lights were annoying. I don't find them annoying at all. I mean, if anything, you could just flip it over. If uh, if it's bothering you in brightness, especially like at night for night listening. Uh, I know I've gone to sleep listening to this with the phone, uh, and it really just sounds superb. Look how pretty that is in there. That's shiny. And I do. I have a protective film on here that it came with, that I kept inside of it because I, I just I didn't want it to ever get scratched up so usually if there's if there's a protective thing on it then I usually keep the protective thing um, that case is on there really good I don't I don't want to end up ruining the case let me do some camera magic here it is outside the case still very nice looking with even without the case and of course this is a uh, you know evolution the, the original one was the uh, M12, which I heard was very, very good as well. As you can see, the little tabby there, because I kept the uh, thing on. You can't really tell it's on there, to be quite honest. And of course, it's going to protect the screen. So I would recommend leaving it on, uh, so you can enjoy this and clean it without worrying about it getting scratched. The case is extremely easy to put on. Just line it up, and it slides right in there. Too bad I did that backwards. Now, of course, you're going to have this plastic protector and you're going to have this little tabby. So just do it at an angle. And there you go. No one will ever know that you have left the uh, protector on it. So like I said, high and low gain are the only controls. I would have liked the volume control. I got used to that with the Go Bar. But other than that, uh, really, really simple, easy to use. Looks great. It's tiny. Um, it may not be the smallest one that I have, but it is small enough to fit in just about any case or anything else like that. So let's look at uh, some of the highlights of this one. Now, um, this one is very small, obviously. Uh, it uses a uh, balanced amplification circuit technology, uh, meaning the 4.4 millimeter and the 3.5 millimeter are uh, both can be used for power out, uh, if, if you're going to use it in that way. Um, this thing is, actually I'm going to look at my notes, see what my notes say. So uh, inside the box, you're going to have your documentation and your manual, you're going to have two cables, you're going to have uh, C to A and C to C which are very useful if you're an Apple person, I believe there's a, a lightning. Um, so you get those inside there. Obviously you get a case right now. I don't know how long that's going on for. You get the unit itself, you get documentation, you get a manual. 
uh, inside the M15, you get a uh, ES9281AC DAC chip. It is capable of decoding at uh, DSD 256 native, uh, PCM 32 bit at 384 kilohertz, as well as 8 times MQA. Um, there's great numbers here when it comes to driving power. Uh, 22.6 milliwatts max on the 4.4 millimeter output, and just under 12 milliwatts for the 3.5 millimeter output. Uh, also, there is a very low ground noise um, with a minus 130 decibels. So that's very good. Uh, in most situations, the uh, the M15 was literally uh, just noiseless, like a black background. There are some phones, if you're using phones and very sensitive IMs, there's that kind of initial hiss there, and then that just goes away once the music starts playing. I didn't get really any noises on anything other than that. Uh, I mean, literally, this thing almost has a pitch black background, uh, which brings out the really good sound that it actually gives off. Uh, speaking of that, sound impressions. The M15 is seriously like one of the best ones that I've it, that I don't like saying best because my best may not be your best. Uh, maybe you've tried something even more expensive than this. I, I've never tried the Luxury and Precision, so I don't know how that one is. Um, there are quite a few that I haven't tried. Uh, I haven't tried anything from Shanling. I haven't tried anything from Hibby. Uh, so, you know, I have a, 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 like a big gap when it comes to dongles. I've had like the GoBar and I've had the, the Beam 2, the Beam 3, the Beam 3 Pro, um, just countless other dongles from other companies, but there's, there's still, I haven't had like all the popular ones. So as far as I'm saying, uh, like if I was going to put these in perspective, um, I would say like at the top of my list would have to be the uh, Beam 3 Pro, then on top of that, I would say the GoBar, and then on top of that, definitely the M15. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe the third spot kind of tied between the DD Hi-Fi and the Beam, because the Beam had a lot of power, but the DD Hi-Fi just sounded really, really good. Uh, this one would definitely be at the top of the list. Um, Sound-wise, it, it competes with a lot of other things. This thing competes with, like, some of the amps I have. I, I think this sounds almost as good, if not even better, in some cases. Um, I say I'm a lot. Sorry about that. Uh, I'm, I'm just trying to read the notes and, like, talk at the same time. So, I wrote all of that. And I wrote that the M15 is, without any doubt, one of the best... I've personally used. It maintains a neutral presentation with superb clarity and detail retrieval. That is so true. And I wrote that after using it for like a, a little bit of time. And now that I've used it for even more time, because I can't stop using it, I have like a couple of favorite things and you can see them out on the desk. So you know what they are. Um, obviously my Bluetooth, my favorite Bluetooth DAC, my favorite DAP and my favorite dongle right there. Um, Questyle has both excellent dynamics and superb resolution, making a, a great dongle DAC slash regular DAC, whatever you want to use it for. Uh, great for critical listening and fun listening because it does have really good dynamics there. The bass comes through really superb and detailed and it's got the power and everything. And it's not overemphasized. It, the sound of the thing, I'm trying to see if I actually wrote that down. Bass, mids, and treble present with a linear extension and excellent technicalities. Sound stage is open, accurate, and with separation and details that are very, very good. So afterthoughts, it said I used a larger variety of in-ear headphones with this dongle. I handled them all perfectly. And over-ear headphones like Fostex T50RP, Hi-Fi-Man, HE4X, Ananda, uh, Moondrop Blessing, Kato, Aria, the Grado uh, SR80X, and Philips X2HR. That's just a few. Like I threw, when I'm testing, I throw everything at it. So that was just a few. 
Um, so honestly, uh, this thing has details. This thing has a nice sound across from the bass to the treble and back and forth. The sound stage is good. It's open. It's accurate. There's separation and details there. Uh, there's really nothing that I can pick that like it doesn't do well. This is definitely something that somebody looking for either critical listening or fun listening, you're going to enjoy this either way. Because it really brings out the best of the music. Uh, and it does, it's not picky. It doesn't uh, like ruin bad tracks. Obviously a bad track is a bad track. But, you know, it doesn't make them worse. So ultimately, I think this thing sounds great. It powers all these headphones, no problem. Um, it is tiny. Uh, I don't have the go bar with me. But look, I, I can pull out an old um, Bluetooth DAC which I thought was small, and this thing is a lot smaller than even this little Bluetooth DAC. So this thing is tiny, um, and it's just, just a pleasure to use this, and it's so easy to just keep it with you, and it's so easy to use on your computer, or on your, um, even on your phone, or even using on adapts. I mean, I do, a lot of people frown on that, and I do use, especially with the little ones, like if I'm gonna be using the V6, that has like a dual DAC, chip set in that and its own amps and everything and that sounds you know very good as is i don't think it really needs anything but there are some DACs that sound really really good but if then if you're having like more you need more power or something like the little ap80 and you want to plug it into a dongle works good it does work good you can do that i've seen a lot of people use uh, dongles on their daps so ultimately this dac amplifier is the one of the smallest that I can think of that I would carry with me constantly. Um, this was never going to leave my bag, to be honest. I love this thing, and even if I'm not using that day, supposedly I'm even if I'm using Bluetooth headphones, I'm going to keep that with me. I'm going to keep my backup pair. I always keep a cheap pair of I am somewhere around, like these KZs or something, something inexpensive for a backup pair. Uh, as well as a true wireless. Yeah, I got like three or four things in my bag. Uh, I can't help it. Uh, so, anyway, Quest Style. Very, very good. They make some really high-end stuff. And so the 200 and whatever it is price tag for this, I don't think I wrote that down anywhere. Did I? No. Nope. I didn't write it down the price exactly, but it is around just a little bit below $300 and it's premium you know components it looks premium and it definitely lives up to that in the sound seriously uh, very good sound on this low ground noise and like I said some phones there may be that initial hiss with it and that especially if you're using balanced armature I am so you can't get around that I've used I, I've used a thousand dollar amplifier and it still does that on those um, some are just very, very, you know, sensitive. I, I just love the way this looks. I love seeing the board on the inside. I really do. Um, so, ultimately, obviously, I'm smitten with the looks of it. Uh, I love the performance of it. And I would definitely give it high marks. So, that's it in a nutshell. Um, I do like the M15. I'll be using this for testing all the time so you probably see it in the background if I like it it's gonna be here somewhere I keep the stuff that I want like at fingers reach and there are some other things obviously off to the side there's some other things that I like too but these are the things that I seem to be using the most um, thank you so much for watching I hope this video was informative and I will see you somewhere on the internet please be safe